is going on guys rogue tcg here bringing the Yu-Gi-Oh! tcg deck profile now this is going to be a discord uh submission so y'all requested this on discord uh this upcoming weekend we're doing uh more submissions on the youtube channel page so check out for that to see when the voting goes up it should be going up the day after this video goes up so keep an eye out for that and you'll be able to vote on what deck is shown uh next week but for this week and at least for today I am bringing you Dragon Ruler Kashtira. So now that all the rulers are all back at two, uh, they make a pretty decent rank seven engine. Uh, and, and just because of that, I decided I would like to try and pair them with the Kashtiras. Now, there isn't just the level center seven synergy. There is also the synergy of the Dragon Rulers being able to pitch either dragons or uh, their attribute assigned to the Dragon Ruler in order to get the other effect. So Tempest is wind, Redox is earth, a title is water and blaster is fire which just so happens to be all the attributes of the cashier monsters Fenrir being earth unicorn being wind rise heart being fire cashier and ogre being uh sorry tear cash and ogre being water and scareclaw cashier is being another earth like Fenrir. so i just wanted to bring this deck to you all and i just wanted to get your all's opinion on it so that's enough yapping about the overall deck profile let's go into the card by card Starting off with our rulers, we are on two Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms. You can pitch this card and a wind monster to the graveyard to add a dragon from our deck to our hand. We can banish a total of two winds and or dragon monsters from our hand or graveyard to special summon this from our hand or graveyard. During our opponent's end phase, if we special summon this card, oh sorry, if we control this special summon card, we can return it to our, uh, we have to return it to our hand. And if this card is banished, we can add one wind dragon monster from our deck to our hand, and we can only use one Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storm's Effect per turn, and only once that turn. So all the Dragon Rulers are going to have that last effect, as well as the effect to bring themselves out of the hand or graveyard by banishing um, either dragons or their appropriately attributed typed monsters from the hand or graveyard, as well as the effect to uh, pitch it as well as one of the uh, corresponding attributed monsters out of your hand to do something else. And they will all have to return to the hand if they are special summoned uh, during the end phase. So just getting all that out ahead of time. So I'm not going to have to repeat it with every dragon ruler, but we are on two Tempest. The main search target for Tempest is we can grab another Tempest as well as we do have run one lightning dragon ruler of a draft. So this is another uh, wind dragon target for our Tempest. So all together, a pretty decent card. It's just a level seven. And again, this pairs with our Cash Tira Unicorn. We're on two Redox Dragon Ruler of Boulders. If it's on our hand or in Graveyard, we can banish two Earths and our Dragons to special summon it. Uh, and uh, during our opponent's end phase, bounce it to our hand, of course. And then we can pitch this card in an Earth Monster to the Graveyard to target one monster in our Graveyard and special summon that target. Really great for grabbing back um, caches that are in our Graveyard for some reason, maybe we melded off of tier cash, who knows? But really great for grabbing those, especially if you grab something like a Fenrir or a Unicorn, we're able to activate their ignition effect on the field if we haven't already previously in the turn. So we are on to Redox. Also, it is well known that Redox Pass is an FDK against all decks, so to do with that what you will. We're on to Title Dragon Ruler of Waterfalls. If this card's in our hand or graveyard, we can do the Dragon Ruler thing. Um, and then during the end phase, it's bounced back to hand. And we can pitch this card and a water monster to the graveyard to send one water monster from our deck to the graveyard. And if this card is banished, we can add a water dragon type monster from our deck to our hand. And in Redox, if banished, it gets to add an earth dragon from deck to hand. All the dragons are also going to do that. I forgot to mention that with Tempest. My bad, pimp. But we are also on to Blaster Dragon Ruler of Infernos to round out our big daddy dragon rulers. Uh, this card reads, if it's in our hand or graveyard, we can banish it, yada yada yada, special summon it, bounce it, you know, you know the shtick. We can pitch this card in a fire monster, target one card on the field, and destroy that target. This one's the best in-hand effect, at least in my opinion. Maybe tied with either Redox or Title. Title, of course, is Foolish Burial. Redox is Monster Reborn. And Blaster is going to be a pop, so... In my opinion, Blaster is just the best one to be proactively using. The main downside with Blaster is this deck actually is running the least amount of fires in the Kashtira regard. 
playing only two cash tier Arise Heart, but we are um, kind of making up for that a little bit because we are playing Triple Ash Blossom in this list. We are on Baby Rulers, one Stream, one Burner, one uh, Lightning, and one Reactin. I'm just going to go over one of these and you'll be able to kind of, I think, assume, like, uh, get the hint on what the other ones kind of do pretty quickly. We can pitch this card in a Dragon or Water to Special Summon a title from our deck, but it can't attack this turn. We can lose each uh, this effect of stream once per turn. Now, Burner does the same for Dragon or Fires and summons Blaster. Lightning, same for uh, Dragon or Wind, summons Tempest, you know, so on and so forth. You kind of get the idea on what they're trying to go for here. We're only running one apiece of these cards because they are searchable with the big daddies, as well as the fact if we run too many of the little ones, it does mean this deck has too many normal summons, and we don't really want to be normal summoning in this deck. Um at least early on because it does lock us out of our cash tiras for the most part but also we kind of want to be normal summoning with cash tier of birth to be able to get extra value out of that normal summon without having to tribute our big sevens but that's it for our dragon rulers now let's cover our cash tiras we're on three fenrir we can uh, all the cash tiers will have the same summoning condition except for rise heart and like tier cash and i guess scare claw so I guess these seven cash tiers have the same summoning requirement. Uh, they have to have us control no monsters, and we can just summon them right out of our hand, just like Cyber Dragon. Uh, Fenrir on Ignition gets to add a cash tier car, uh, monster from our deck to our hand. Unicorn on Ignition gets to add a cash tier spell, uh, uh, spell from our deck to our hand, and Ogre gets to add a cash tier a trap. They will all also have effects when our opponent activates an effect, or we declare an attack with them. This, uh, this will start on a new chain if the act effect was activated. Fenrir allows us to uh, target a face of card our opponent controls and banish it face down. Unicorn lets us look through our opponent's extra and banish a card face down. And then Ogre allows us to look at the top five of our opponent's deck, banish one face down, and then put the rest back in the same order. So the best one, obviously, is going to be either Fenrir or Unicorn. Ogre is a little bit uh, middling in this regard. But it is still not the worst, and we are just playing it primarily for the attribute, to be completely honest, for the title and the stream. But we are also playing one cash tier trap, so theoretically it is searchable if we're not just going to banish it. So there are plays to be made that way as well. We're also on two copies of cash tier rise heart. If you control a cash tier monster, we can special summon this card from our hand, and we cannot special summon monsters for extra deck the rest of this turn, except for XC's monsters. During our main phase, if this card was normal or special, we can banish a cash tier from our deck, except for itself. Banish the top three cards of our opponent's deck face down, and if we do banish any cards, this level becomes level seven. So this is a great way to get extra resources, get access to our cash tiers by banishing them, and then we can bring them back later with our cash tier of birth. It's just a fantastic card, but we don't want to be running too many of this card because it is very searchable, so we are only playing two. Speaking of, we don't want to be playing too many. We're on two copies of Tier Limit Cash Tier. Now, this card actually has a weird purpose in this deck that it doesn't really in other uh, Cash Tier decks. Other Cash Tier decks, you don't really want to be milling yourself all too much, but in this deck, uh, it's not necessarily the worst in the world because milling Dragon Rulers is always going plus. So we are on two Tier Limit Cash Tiers. During the main phase, quick effect, we can special summon this card from our hand, and if we do banish a cash or a tier card from our hand or graveyard, if this card is normal or special, we can mill the top three of either player's deck to the graveyard, and if this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, we can mill the top two of our deck to the graveyard. And then each of those effects is a soft, uh, I mean, sorry, a hard once per turn, but we can use each of those effects in a turn. So if we mill our dragon rulers, we can get benefits that way, otherwise it's just a water that we can banish with our title or pitch with our stream just like our ogre was, but we do need to play some amount of these waters in order to be able to access our title, so that is why we are on a little bit of a heavier amount than some other lists might be comfortable with. And then our last, uh, scare, uh, sorry, I guess it is our last scare claw, but it is also our last cash tira, being scare claw cash tira. During the main phase quick effect, we can special summon this card from our hand, and if we do banish a cash tira or a scare claw card from our hand or graveyard, we don't use this effective scare cash once per turn. This card can attack while in face of defense position. It's a super heavy samurai. And if it does, apply its defense for damage calculation. If a cash tier or a scare claw monster battles an opponent's monster, that opponent's monster's effects are negated until the end of the turn. Sometimes this uh, having an Armades is just good enough. Being a 2600 attacker might also sometimes be good enough. This is kind of a pivot card. It is also just another Earth, so we don't have to really necessarily remove our Fenrir. It's just another uh, cash tier card. In worst case, worst comes to worst, it's just a level 7 extender where we can use to Xyz Climb. But that's it for our cash tier main deck monsters. Now let's cover our cash spells. We're on one uh, Terraform, which is just another copy of Pressure Planet Raceoth. 
When it's activated, we can add a cash monster from deck to hand. Monsters we control gain 100 att an attack and defense for each different attribute on the field. If a Shangri era we control activates an effect, we can target a card in the field and destroy it. We can lose each effect of Wraith Soth once per turn. Um, this card's fantastic. It's a Rota on activation. It's typically going to give our monsters about 300 to 400 attack, although in theory it could potentially give us 600 attack for all of our monsters if there's a divine monster on board but that's probably never going to happen um as well as the fact that it gives our uh shangri era another effect kind of means we can kind of sit on it and just you know claim our advantage as it comes uh speaking of coming i'm gonna come when we go to a theosis uh we can target one cashier monster you control special summon one cashier monster with a different attribute from your deck in defense position for us the turn after this effect card resolves we cannot special from the extra deck except for xyz monster we got the same lock as we do with rise heart but these are the only two cards that i believe lock you so not necessarily the worst thing in the world and if this card is banished we can target one of our banished caches except for itself and add it to our hand you noticed how our uh, tier cache and our scare cache banish. This is our way we can get those cards we banish right back to our hand to maintain our advantage. We're also on one copy of Cashier Birth along to normal summon level 7 monsters without tributing. And during our main phase, we can special summon a non Xyz cache that's banished or in our graveyard. And if our opponent activates a spell card or effect and we control a cache monster, we can target three cards in our opponent's graveyard and banish them face down. Great graveyard hate, great uh, monster reborn effect, great uh, continuous effect to allow us normal summon monsters. Uh, I would say play more, but honestly playing one isn't the worst in the world because we are playing triple unicorn and then triple ways to get a unicorn and then one way to get to the way to get to unicorn and then three more ways to get to unicorn. So we have a lot of ways to get to unicorn. So that's, I don't think that's actually something we're too concerned about. And then our last cash tier card is one copy of cash tier at Big Bang. If a cash tier exes monsters on the field and the player controls two or more monsters, they must banish monsters they control face down. So they only control one monster. If this card is banished, we can target a cash tier exes we control. Add one of your cash tier monsters attached to it to your hand, then you can special summon that monster from your hand. Now, the reason we are playing this deck is for that second effect, because the idea is we want to be banishing this with something like our cash tier or Rise Heart, and then we can target like a Fenrir or a Unicorn that's underneath of our cash tier or Shangri Era, add it back to our hand, and then immediately special summon it so we can end our board with one of these two on board to have some like really good interaction against our opponent. And then lastly, for our non-engine, we're on one Call by the Grave, one Pot of Prosperity, because we do have a pretty flexible extra deck, to be completely honest, and we do want to find specific cards at specific times. And then for Hand Traps, we're on Triple Ash Blossom. We're playing it for the reason I mentioned earlier, not only just for the Fire, but also for the Mulcharmies. And then two copies of Infinite and Permanence. These five cards right here, these are kind of like flex spots, to be completely honest. So if there's something else you wanted to put in the deck, I'd recommend slotting them in here or changing it however you'd see fit. This is just what I was able to brew with the concept given to me. I don't mean to interrupt the video, but I do just want to give you all guys a heads up. We are quickly rising in our subscriber number, and I did want to make you all aware that once we hit 2,000 subscribers, I am going to be doing another giveaway. Now, I remember I did one once we hit 500 subscribers, and we did a special thing for 1,000, so I want to do something special for 2,000. And you see this beautiful mat right here? Well, it can be yours. I have two extra mats me there's one of them and let me get that second one for y'all i have two extra pristine mats for you all so i got you know i got multiple of these and to two lucky winners i'm going to be giving one to one person and one to another and the person who wins the overall um giveaway is also going to get a full orchest deck I can't guarantee it's going to be max rarity, but I'm going to see what I can do. And I'm going to try and make it look nice and pretty for you. It's not going to be the full deck. It's just going to be the core Orcist cards. But I want to be able to give you one of you all the ability to play one of my favorite decks. So just something I'm doing for you. You can always pop into our Discord. I believe that's where I'm going to be doing the giveaway. The Discord's always going to be in the description of my videos. I'm going to have a little bit more details once we start rolling up on that. But I just wanted to make you all aware of that. Now, back to the video. In our extra deck, we are on Link's 2 SP Little Knight and 1 IP Mascarena. These probably aren't necessary because we do get locked with Theosis and Rise Heart. However, SP Little Knight is still a hell of a card and it is quite cheap, so we are playing two copies of it just to have the option available to us at almost every point in the game. And then the IP Mascarena is if we get interacted with, we can end on IP plus a monster pass. And then theoretically, the monster would be a cash tier of some sort. So we could interact with the cash tier, then go IP, then go to SP, interact with the SP, and then interact one more time with the SP. 
We're also on one Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon because we are playing uh, our Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon because it is a seven. So in theory, we could go two monsters into Absolute, link off a monster and Absolute to make IP Mascarena. And then with uh, our Absolute summon our Vortex Dragon, although we're not going to be able to do anything with it because we don't have any Pendulums, but just a proof of concept to be completely honest. These are just two flex spots that you can put in the extra deck. I don't think it's good, but it's something you could do. And then for actual good cards, we're on one Dark Arm, the Dragon of Annihilation. Uh, once per turn, if you have exactly five Darks, never going to happen. You can also exceed it by just putting it on top of a level five or higher Dark. Again, never going to happen. Uh, you can attach one material from this card, target a card on, on your opponent controls, destroy it, then banish a card from our graveyard, and you can't attack for the rest of the turn. Now, there is one piece of text missing from that second effect of this card. Uh, I'm going to give you a moment to, uh, to think about it. I'm going to type in the comments if you find out what it is. Uh, well, time's up. Uh, it's a once per turn. There's no once per turn on that second effect. Uh, not even a soft once per turn. So as long as this card has materials, which it's two plus level seven monsters. So in theory, you can have five things underneath of it. You can pretty much pop up to five times. Typically, you're only going to pop twice or three times. But in theory, if you have to, you can just board wipe. We are also on one Blaze Supreme Ruler all of Dragons. This is the Dragon Ruler 7. It's not necessarily that good, to be completely honest. I'm just pulling it for thematic purposes. Once per turn, you can attach a material from this card. Destroy two cards, one from your hand or field, and one from your uh, one your card your opponent controls. You banish a total of two fires and or dragons from your hand or graveyard to special summon this card from your graveyard, but return to the extra deck when it leaves the field. Now, the one good thing about this card is it does return itself to the extra deck, so we're pretty much always going to have access to this at almost every point in the game. But the one thing that um, this card is kind of bad about is it's not actually a really good removal card. It requires us to both make this card, give up material that we're detaching off of this card, and then give up one of our own cards just to pop our opponent's card. So at that point, we put three materials into a card, or three cards into this one card, in order to remove one of our opponent's card. Doesn't really seem like a fair exchange. In fact, it kind of uh, reminds me of a uh, Heretic Sun Dragon Overlord of Heliopolis. For once per turn, we can detach a material from this card to tribute any number of monsters from our hand or field, minimum one, and destroy an equal number of cards on the field. Except, this card is better than the this card is. Because, not only does it not target, but it doesn't have to pop just one. You can tribute as many monsters as you would like, from either hand or field, in order to pop that many cards. Now, the downside to this is, it has to be monsters while our blaze is any card. But in my opinion, I think this old ass blue eyes ass support card is um, a lot better than Blaze's. Funny cards that we are playing that are actually quite good are we're playing two Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. It's honestly not the worst thing in the world to end your board on two Flare Metal Dragons and something like a Cash Tier of Fenrir. Uh, it's actually quite hard to deal with if your opponent doesn't like open Droplet or Dark Ruler or something along that line. Because everything they're activating burns them for over an eighth of their health. So they got. They got less than seven activations in them, so let's see what they can do under seven activations and a Fenrir. Better have something good. Uh, so that's the reason we're playing two Flare Metal. Uh, honestly, if you wanted to, you can cut like the Odd Eyes Absolute and Vortex to put in the third and then, you know, the fourth Flare Metal. Don't put in a fourth Flare Metal, but you know, you could. Don't, don't actually put a fourth one in there. And then we're on one copy of Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack. Also, another reason we're playing the IP is because we make two tokens with our Draco Sack. So we can turn two sevens into an IP plus SP by making two tokens with Draco, Draco Sack using the tokens for IP. And then we have our Draco Sack in an IP ready to make an SP Little Knight at any time. We're on two copies of Big Eye in order to steal our opponent's monsters again so we can make SP Little Knight. One copy of Besidra Abyss, the Atlantean Dragon Lord. We need to use three monsters for this card, but it is kind of useful in this deck specifically. Once per turn, we can also XC summon this by using an Atlantean or Mermail. We're going to be hard summoning this. Once per turn, we can detach two materials from this card, send one water from our hand or deck to the graveyard to bounce up to three cards our opponent controls to the hand. That is non-targeting, non-destruction removal. Y'all know how much I love that. And it also gets to send a water monster from our deck to the graveyard. Now, what's a water monster in Kashtira that you would like to send to the graveyard? Probably nothing. There isn't any real water that you want to be sending to the graveyard. But in this deck... We have Tidal that we can send to the graveyard. And then Tidal is just a, basically a free level 7. As long as we have other waters or other dragons in our graveyard, 
we can just bring it out and get to hit in our opponent's noggin. So, I think Poseidro Abyss is a very fun card in um, this deck. I'm not necessarily sure if it's optimal, but I think it's a very cool card, and I would really like to see other people play with it in other decks that aren't Mermaid Atlantean. And then lastly, we're on two copies of Kashira Shangri-Era. It needs two plus level seven monsters during each standby. We can special summon a Kashira from our deck. We can only use the previous effect of Shangri-Era once per turn. Each time an effect, uh, a card your opponent owns and possesses is banished face down, except during the damage step, we can block one of their main monster zones or spell and trap zones while this card's face up on the field. And if this card on the field would be destroyed by battle or card effect, we can detach a material from this card instead. So, so just a fantastic card. It doesn't actually have any offensive prowess, but essentially it is the battleship for the Cash Tiras, allowing them every standby phase to have one more to the collection, as well as if the Cash Tiras are doing what they're meant to be doing, which is banishing your opponent's cards face down, you're going to be able to really lock down their game plan by securing their zones and limiting what options they have. Now, it's not going to be as brutal as it was um, back when we had a Diablosis and a Rise Fart, where we're able to basically lock every single zone. It can still be quite brutal because we can lock specific zones, especially if decks need zones to work, like Pendulum or Cybers related decks that need to be summoning to like Link Point or something along that line. But that's going to be about it for the deck profile. Thank you all so much for watching, if you still are, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye bye. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you wanted to talk to more Yu-Gi-Oh players like yourself, I would highly recommend checking out our Discord server. Link is going to be in the description as well as the QR code on screen. We do talk somewhat frequently about Yu-Gi-Oh and the current meta, so I would really enjoy to see you there. As well as we do recently now have channel memberships available on our YouTube channel where we have three different tiers. We have Super Supporter at $2 a month, where you get loyalty badges, emojis, guaranteed comment responses, a shout out at the end of every video, as well as access to the members only Discord channel where you get early sneak peeks at future videos. There is the Giga Supporter at $5 a month, where you have early access to all new videos about a day or two before they go up, as well as all the previous offers. And for $15 a month, we do have our final tier, which is going to be Femboy Fanatic. You get a guaranteed customized video every single month, as well as one hour of my time. Could be for anything you'd like. You want a duel? Absolutely. You want me to help build the deck? Absolutely. You want to play some Hell Divers? Sure. I'll do anything for an hour once a month. But supporting does help me out quite a lot, and it does help me produce all of these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye-bye.